that's, that's awesome. a fee right there. When you've got four days yep. from scratch yep. to have <clears throat> something to show for it, um, coordinating yes. so many different people, it, it was, we learned a lot. Yeah, I'm sure. And, and it was, I'm sure. It was really good that we only had, hi, Anita, hi. Um, a couple of scripts to work with because had yeah. we had more, there's no way. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> learning experiences. Oh, yeah. it, was a, it was a good way to ease in. So, yeah, yeah um, before we get too far into the weeds, hi, guys. Welcome hi, to another episode of Spilling Ink. We are back. How many weeks has it been? Two, was it just last week right? that we were gone or was it? No, yeah, yeah. Last week we were gone, the week, the week before we were here. <clears throat> okay. So it's only, it, it feels like forever, but it, it feels it like does. just yesterday. It's, it's like a weird dynamic of getting older. <laughs> my, okay, my kids are starting school, not this Monday, but next Monday, which is ridiculously early. Yes, yes. But how is summer over? I know. Well, yeah, and it's our second summer vacation, so... I'm I'm officially on vacation. Yay! <laughs> yay! Yay! Started yesterday, um, <laughs> and I'm drinking. <laughs> Have one for me, man. Have one for me. I, I should send you. Some. I got thirty of them at the store. <laughs> I'm like, I saw like, oh, those are good. Oh, yeah, these, those adult Capri Suns are tasty. Yes, these are the frozen daiquiris, and and I think we got Bahama Mamas and things like that. But I'm on vacation, so. And I'm having guests. And when we go up by the fire, ta-da! <laughs> I, I, did, I did my drinking, a little bit too much drinking, uh, last weekend to come back on. <laughs> I, I'm sure if after the day was done, it's like, okay, time to, you know, relax. <laughs> it was Saturday. Yes. Uh, Thursday and Friday, I was dead to the world by the time we left. Mm -hmm. And I had to drive back home. I only had a room for Saturday night, so Saturday yeah. night I got to, to stay and play, but I was so tired by the time I came in oh, sure. and sat down. It was like, no, there's there will be no party. Yes. I'm so, so old. When did I oh, get old? Hi, Rebecca. The, the last Saturday night, we both got trashed. <laughs> no, I got, yes. I, I stayed at a hotel and I got, you know, shit-faced. <laughs> Just put it that way. <laughs> we, we went on a, a scavenger hunt to find... Mm free water with yeah. the joker following us okay free, because they want to charge you for hat? water yeah they want yeah. to charge you for water at the party and we're yes. like no we know the conference rooms have water jugs <laughs> oh my god i just i almost spit all over my computer <laughs> yeah hey margaret <laughs> hi margaret oh hi, no Rebecca. i'm sorry you have a migraine oh uh, Oh, so 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 you watching us as rest? What's that? <laughs> she says I have. A, I'm trying to rest, so she's watching us. That's that's cool. It's yes, just us. let us entertain you with our, our yes. stories mm -hmm. of craziness. Yes, unfortunately, our our um, guest tonight um, is taking care of sick grandchildren, and I gave her a pass and said I would reschedule her because yeah, she's got more important I, things to do. Yeah, she's got a 14 month old grandchild that's sick that's that's not something you want to try to manage while you're no no and it's always worse when it's the babies yes exactly so you know we're very like well, thank you yes thank you. Melissa, oh thank you melissa will be with us on the 17th of september instead so hopefully well. everybody will be covid free by then we we yeah, did have i a, figured um, i figured you know if they catch it this is enough time that it could cycle through the house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we got the COVID warning after Combat Con was over. Um, okay. Luckily, knock on wood, it did not get me. Uh, mm -hmm. But quite a few people around me were popping up sick. So <sighs> well, you've, you've had COVID though, right? Yes, I have. I have had COVID. Mm -hmm. I've had mm -hmm. shots. I've had boosters. Yep. Um, yeah. But <clears throat> with the new variant, you know, that's what know. it is. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> so, okay, so combat con recap. Yes. yes, give us a recap. So Joe came down and he was a such an amazing help. <clears throat> um, again, this was a learning year for us. This was the first yes. time we were doing this program, and we had, of course, very lofty ideas on what we were going to do. 
-hmm. And we started out with fluctuating authors. Ah, I was literally getting like notices. You have three authors, you have two authors, you have three authors, you have two authors of, of people coming in and dropping out because people who get COVID can't come. Yeah. Uh, people last minute signing up, that kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. we ultimately only ended up with two scripts, which at first was like a downer. I was like, oh, we're not going to have enough to do, but it was enough. It was enough. Yeah. Because one, I don't speak script. Mm -hmm. Joe does though. Yeah. <laughs> Point for Joe. <laughs> so as I'm trying to, to work with one author and we had a lot of one-on-one -on -one time, which is yeah. really, really good because That's we were good. such a small, um, small group for the intensive. We mm -hmm. really got to sit down one-on-one -on -one, the authors and the teachers, the directors mm -hmm. and the filmmakers. I mean, it was, everybody got a lot of really good one-on-one -on -one time. What is she saying? BA5 used to be a South Korean plant. <laughs> it does sound like yeah. that. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, and it sounds like everybody who did get it is starting to feel a little bit better. So, That's Yay. Mm -hmm. so no Joe Compton or Brian Tan stand ins. We will have a video featuring <coughs> yes. Joe Compton in just a few minutes. But I got to set it up. I, I got to give you the the buildup of how it went. So it was four days. Yes. So the intensive starts Thursday. So yep. Thursday, we got our first author. The other okay. one was coming in late and yeah. she was supposed to bring another person with her. So we got one-on-one -on -one with this author. Mm -hmm. She had some ideas. She bounced them around with us. We, we circled on an idea that we thought was brilliant, would be perfect for the <clears throat> five minute short we're going after. Yeah. We worked on characters. We worked on the different scenes. Yes, I am. <laughs> and I'm jealous too, because I want I, one. Well, yes. Yeah. My husband asked me as I was sitting here with it on the table, you're going to have that before the show? And I'm like, yes. <laughs> and he goes, is that wise? And I'm like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> anyway, back to Combat Con. So <clears throat> Thursday was literally all day locked in classrooms. <clears throat> It was yep. just back to back teaching sessions. We had sessions that were just with the writers, some that were with the writers and the filmmakers, some that were with the writers and the Macklemore group, which they were the martial artists and combat coordinators. And they specialized in uh, Bowie knife, tomahawk, tactical knife, and close quarters combat. Oh, cool. some really cool stuff to watch. I, yeah. I sat in on one of their classes later in the weekend, and wow, they're fast. Holy hell. <laughs> Anyways, so we got we got a lot of one-on-one -on -one time. And I, I liked being able to work with the, the Macklemore guys and get to know them and work with the filmmakers and get to know them. And the author really got one-on-one, -on -one, like hands-on. That's, that's, like, that's pretty yeah. intensive, great time <laughs> yeah. as an author and as a filmmaker, everything to, to I mean, get it, it, We did what we time. said we were going to do. Mm -hmm. We we you know, worked at their level and got them ready to yeah. get the script out. Luckily, she did speak script. Oh, that's um, good. So she already knew how to write that. So a lot of what we were doing was bouncing around ideas. Hello, cool gamer. <clears throat> and uh, trying to get her to refine it into something that could be a five minute yep. uh, short because that was yep. her time limit. Yep. Um, like I said, all day. And by the end of the day, she had her idea mapped out. She didn't have it written yet, but she had it all mapped out. We'd, we'd even gotten some of the choreography so she could visualize the fights and all that. So she was ready to go. Yep. Again, at the end of the day, I was dead to the world. I just yep. drove home and I was like, yep. And we're done. <laughs> Sleep time. Yep. <laughs> day two, Friday. Our second author came in, did not bring the third author. Apparently, yep. again, another COVID. Yep. Another victim of COVID dropped out. Um, but she brought her daughter with her. Okay. As moral support, which is great because you could tell she needed a little bit more hand holding. And even though we're all friendly people, she yeah. didn't know us. Right. So she had somebody there that that kind of was the go between, kind of, you know, kept her kept her motivated, kept her going. Anytime she looked nervous, she got her to laugh. I mean, it was perfect. Yeah. So we worked her through a scene. She came in again, just like the first one, an idea to work with some characters to work with. We worked on how to develop the characters, all that good stuff. All day sessions again, some sessions mm -hmm. with the filmmakers, some sessions with just the authors, some sessions yep. with the, the stunt group, which 
um, Jared, who is the guy who runs Combat Con, did an yeah. absolutely fabulous class on characterization okay. with the writers and the stunt uh, stunt oh, crew. Awesome. Oh, it was great. He he really had a, a good way of teaching, you know, really creating your characters, really understanding your characters and where they come from and, and what their skill levels are. So that was a fun class to be able to to sit in and participate on. Yes, I would imagine so. <clears throat> so we had just, a lot of fun there. So again, it was an all day just grueling, get it done. Mm. Uh, by the end of the day, we had quiet writing time. I even managed to sit down and get some writing done. On, 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 no, no. Okay. Okay. All right. I was just going to get really excited. <laughs> no, I had work to do. Okay. I had, I had work right. that needed to be turned in. So I actually okay. stayed up until two or three in the morning on Friday after getting home from being at combat con all day. Yeah. And mind you, I was locked in the classrooms. Actually, Joe was yeah. with me the whole time. We were both locked in the classrooms all day, Thursday, all day, Friday, getting these scenes ready. Yep. Saturday I do have a question. Day. I do have a question. Okay. Five five minute script. How many pages are we talking? So because it's a screenplay, yeah, and it's mostly dialogue, it's yeah. about a minute per page. Okay, so about five pages. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's okay. That's sort of what I was trying to figure out because I'm like, okay, how many pages is that? And yeah. <clears throat> Got it. Yeah, that's what Thank they you. told me. <laughs> yes, yes. Did it work out that way? Um, yes and no. So again, on Friday, okay. the, the, the writing day, yeah. um, our first author came in and she had her script <clears throat> done. She brought it in and there was immediately changes that needed to be made and, and cuts yes. and trimming it down and yep. all kinds of stuff. So Friday was a grueling writing day. Yes. And then I came home and and did more work more so that I could play on Saturday. Yes. Saturday was filming day. Oh, that's so, so much fun. Filming they is always, started in the morning. Filming always casting laugh. all of the uh, the stunt people. <laughs> yep. Um, assigning the the filmmakers that were going to make the movie. Yep. Uh, they had already scouted locations, so they knew where in the hotel they were going to film. Okay. And um, we'd already talked to the the Macklemore guys. They already had their weapons and everything. Uh huh. So I went. Peace out, guys. Yep. I'll see you when you're done. And I played the whole rest of the day. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Only two or three hours of sleep, mind you. Yep. And then mm -hmm. I did Tai Chi. I did a Tai okay. Chi fan class. Yep. I did a What the Hell is Your Core class. Okay. <laughs> where they work on, on showing you activating your core and what it feels like when you're doing something correctly mm. versus incorrectly. And at one point, they had uh, we had swords in our hands. Yeah. Yes. And uh, I was trying to do an upper, you know, an uppercut. Yeah. And the part person I was partnered with just had his pinky mm -hmm. at the tip of the sword. And just that little bit of pressure was so hard for me to swing up. Oh, wow. And you really had to use everything to do. <laughs> yeah. So I walked out of that class a little bit sore. <laughs> Yeah, and they went into self defense after that. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> I was not joking when I said Saturday was my play day because mm -hmm. after that was the time traveler's ball. Nice. So I went and I checked in. I had the hotel room for Saturday night. Checked in, got dressed up. Did not get any pictures. <laughs> of course not. That's started right. the night off with two margaritas and some Mexican food. Okay. Well, you had food. Yeah. That's that was the only thing I ate that day, by the way. Oh, wow. I forgot to eat breakfast that morning, too. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, Regine, mm. it was so much fun. <laughs> like, did, so much fun. Especially, okay, the, the self-defense class. Did you do the long sword yoga? I missed it because it was on Sunday morning and I had a class that day. Okay. But anyways, um. So the, the self-defense class is called Be Safe Self-Defense, and it's supposed to be women only, but they did have two guys in there this time because yeah. the instructor knew them and knew that they weren't going to do anything stupid. Okay. And it's one of my favorite classes to take because oh. it's so ridiculous. I love it. <laughs> it's, it, you know, it's an instructor that, that's, you know, got to touch you in order to show you the move. So yeah. he always prefaces, you know, if he's going to have you as like the, the sparring dummy or whatever, he's like, can I touch you? Yes. Sure. 
All right, we're doing the boob grab. <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's like, all right. So the you know drunken guy comes up and he grabs your, <laughs> he goes to grab for your boob, and then he like yeah. he, he he was pointing out how men grab versus females. He had yeah. us all partnering off, and we all had to ask, "Can I touch you?" Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Learning how to you know pin the wrist and and manipulate yep. the uh, the joints in order to get them away from you. Yes. And and one of the moves was you know. Give them the best squeeze of their life because it's the last one they're going to feel before you break the wrist. Yep. Yep. So well, I, yeah. I love and that class. There's, there's it's the, you know, the, the, the over and cl- clamp. Oh, no, no. This, are, this yeah. was the, the pin the wrist so their wrist is kind of sticking out. Yeah. And then tweak it so their shoulder and their wrist turn. Oh, okay. Yep. And they, <laughs> yeah, they go sideways real quick. Yes. And uh, that was just one of them. They, they, we learned a bunch of moves, but it was... <laughs> That is such a fun class. The instructor's hilarious. His wife also helps out with it. And she is yeah. the sweetest woman ever. <laughs> so it's just nothing but laughs and um, everybody learning some fun moves. And it's a good time. It, it's I, I will go to that class every single year. I actually got to be a training dummy for one because I remembered the move Ooh. from the year before. <clears throat> That's awesome. <laughs> so, I was all proud of myself. I was like, oh, you're doing the ponytail pull. And he's like, you want to come up here? I'm like, <laughs> yes <laughs> so while yes, all that is going is. on the film guys <laughs> spent the entire day and joe was with them filming the scenes oh <laughs> which okay. someday they edited so that we could show yes. them all off yes marcus says last time i was in karate class i had no boobs to speak of i still don't oh i and i'm not in that <laughs> I'm not in that issue. I had one of those sports bras on that that enhances with padding. So if we did the the boob grab, I'm like, yeah, it's all pads, yeah. guys. Yeah. It's all no, pads. No, I'm a little well endowed. <laughs> Rebecca, yes, we did one that was snapping the fingers. Uh, <clears throat> the chokehold, that was one we yep. did where it was find the thumb and put it in your pocket. And then you get those fingers around it, you yank it down. That thumb is either going the way you want it to go or it's coming off. Right. So yes, yeah. we did we did some of those. And again, it was fun. <laughs> yep. It was a lot of fun. And then we did the time travelers ball. So oh, I started yeah. the evening, two margaritas. Yep. They yeah, had a was, rum and coke after that. I was drinking Saturday night cranberry orange and vodka. Vodka. Mm. Vodka. Okay. Yes, vodka. Yes. <laughs> yes. Not rum like tonight. <laughs> there were some really good costumes. <laughs> Lots of drunk yes. people. Yep. <laughs> I did not get any pictures. That's okay. <clears throat> did anybody? I keep waiting. I know. I mean, this is one of the reasons I hate instagram stories because yes they i know well. there were some pictures that were posted on combat con's story but when i went back to look for them because they were on stories they're gone i can't find them now right so yeah i have no pictures of the awesome outfit that i had so anybody out there if you have pictures of katie at the ball please post them because we would like to see them <laughs> <laughs> the the uh, instructor Stephen Fick, who did the um, self defense class, yep. he was dressed as um, Captain Obvious. Oh, okay. <laughs> he was out on the dance floor doing the uh, the Fiore dance with the different guards. <laughs> <laughs> we had a, a a very animated Joker, full <clears throat> costume. Uh, who was chasing people around. So when we went on our little adventure to find water, he was chasing us. Okay. <laughs> uh, the dance drunk. floor was I'm wild. Drunk, Rebecca. Like, I, just <laughs> standing on the sidelines. It was ridiculously wild and hilariously yeah. entertaining. I stood there for, for a long time just watching the mayhem in front of me. <laughs> like, you could tell everyone was blowing off steam because it, it was it was crazy. Yeah. What is Jane? I rely on your picture. I'm sorry. I I forgot I had my phone half the time. And the first two days I was stuck in classrooms. So there was nothing interesting to take a picture of. <clears throat> so by the time I got to the, the ball, I was already half drunk and forgot my phone anyway. So whoops. Well, 
not taking pictures mean you're, means you're present in the moment. Yes. That's why I was like, didn't, didn't the conference have a conference photographer? Yeah, they did. So I'm, I'm hoping they will <clears throat> surface at some point. Yes. I would think at the, well, it's been a week. So yeah, I would think they would have at least some of them out. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. there will be. There, there will I mean, be. the wedding photographer already had two, two, <laughs> two reveals out already. <laughs> That's the thing. They posted everything on social media under stories. And yeah, so like and that night I was like, oh, well, these are great pictures. I'll come back later. And then when I come back later, they're not there. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. People's stories don't work. Yeah. Stories are not memories. They go away. I don't understand the point of stories because mm. unless I actively go look for stories. I don't see them. Yeah. It's not like TikTok. <laughs> I, I don't. Somebody please explain to us the purpose of disappearing things that you post I, I don't I don't get it. Well, I think it's time bound and and it it I it gives a sense of urgency. But if I'm posting time, something, I want to make sure people see it. Right. And I know the algorithms work against you. So I'm just gonna post it to my feed. So yeah, when you get around to it, you can see it. Yes. <clears throat> exactly. Like it doesn't make it doesn't make sense. Like I get, yeah, they want you to stay on and, and the urgency, but yeah, do people like fall for that? Like, I don't know. I don't know. My my sister in law was telling me about them, and and she's like, "You should do them." I'm like, "Why? They're temporary." Yeah. And and you know, I don't know if she gets that. I mean, um, I know you but can. She's save. doing. It, she's doing it. Yeah, she's doing it for Moya Moya, um, which is the you know a rare disease and yeah. stuff like that. So, I I don't know. It just I've got to I've got to ask that question of her. Why? Why stories versus profile yes maybe more people see it i think less people would see it because if I you're not know. actively mm -hmm. clicking on their little bubbles it goes away after so, so so long yeah and there's no notification yeah. or i turn off most of my notifications yeah sometimes. i do too <laughs> otherwise there's too many of them yeah so exactly. I, I don't know yeah anyway anyway so i will get to the uh the videos mm -hmm. in a yes, second i want to see the videos <laughs> so Saturday night, let's see, we started with two margaritas, then we had the rum and coke. Yeah. And then Jenna showed up. Okay. She won bronze that day in tournament. Good. So, yeah, and it ran a little late. So she ended up having to go back up to her room, get changed yep. with her. You know, she had her whole team with her. Yeah. So she came down probably about almost two hours after the party started. Yep. And next thing you know, she's handing me her drink. <laughs> So I'm, I'm up to I'm up to four drinks now in the span of what maybe two ish hours. Okay, and that's when we went on the scavenger hunt for water. Yep, because there has to be pitchers in some places and cups, pitchers and cups. Yeah, and then we yeah. realized that yard long margaritas made more sense than drinks at the party, and would probably ultimately be cheaper. Probably. <laughs> so I ended up in the casino looking for yard longs. Okay. <laughs> and I know we meant to go back to the party, but I don't think we did. <laughs> next thing you know, we're, that, we're, I don't uh, think we did. <laughs> we're we're up in Jenna's room because she managed to get a suite. Yep. And we're all like just having a great conversation until like two or three in the morning again. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. And at that point, she drank my drink. Oh. Okay. <laughs> we had all of them like lined up on the table. Yeah. And I, I was, I was deep in conversation with somebody and I wish I could remember her name. She was really interesting. Mm -hmm. And then I turned, I'm like, I haven't had any of my, wait a minute. Did I this really drink my... all that? And Maybe Jenna looks over, did. she goes, that's my drink. I was like, no, that was my drink. <laughs> Oops. Oopsie. <laughs> Let's see the video. <laughs> So we had a good time. Yes, that's 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 awesome. And and it was it was well deserved because there was a lot of hard work that went into this. I was I was going to say there's always something about staying at the hotel where all this stuff is going on because you can really let loose. Yes. <laughs> and, and not and what normally happens. I come home. Oh yeah, I'll be back in like an hour, so I'm just going to go home and get changed. Yeah, you, you come never home, get there. you sit down, and you're like, yeah, not happening. Not gonna. Yeah. Happen. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. 
So, okay. We have two to show you. Yes. These are our, our final projects. Yeah, what to see. Uh, <laughs> the first one <clears throat> is probably my favorite. Okay. And you, you may recognize one of the actors in this one. Okay. Let's get this queued up here. Dun, dun, dun. <clears throat> ah, there you go. <clears throat> it doesn't mean anything to you. I mean, clearly, we're here, right? Don't tell me what I think. Elliot, I never know what you think. Bullshit, Kara. When have I ever lied to you? How should I know? You never tell me how you feel, except for this. You're not getting it. No. <clears throat> No, I'm going to escalate. Sure, whatever you want, Ellie. Stop calling me that. <laughs> Your seconds have been selected, and the releases are all assigned. <clears throat> Remember the rules. First blood. Got this, Ellie. Stay focused, Kara. Come on! On your marks, three, two, one, fight. Come on, Kara. I thought you wanted this. <laughs> or do you want me to do all the work? <clears throat> are you gonna talk or are you gonna fight? <laughs> Still dropping your left hand. Use your head! Come on! You! What? What is that legal? It's in the rules. Gary! Sorry! That's it. Come on. Come on. It'll be fine. <laughs> oh, shit! In you. Why are we even doing this? But you said it's yours. You won. Just one last thing then. Who is the dog? So that was the scene that the first author wrote. Okay. And it was pitched as a gladiator meets divorce court, which okay. I thought was brilliant. <laughs> yes. And one of the interesting things, and this was, again, the learning process and why we were combining all of these was to show, you know, where the concept started versus what you got in the end. So the script actually had a lot more moments where there were lawyers involved and the mm -hmm. lawyers were kind of taking bets as the, the <clears throat> clients are fighting over things. And, and I don't know if you could quite hear that, that closing line, but it was, we've got one more thing, who gets the dog? Mm -hmm. And that's when they start <laughs> fighting again. So that yeah. was supposed to be a really like hilarious moment, but due to, you know, the timing constraints uh, due to the limitations on actors, things had to be cut mm -hmm. and the script had to be adjusted. So it was a really good learning experience 
not only to craft the story, but to see the whole process done, obviously, in a very, very quick, mm. um, you know, timeline. So four days to create this five minute short was yeah. really, really, you know, compressed. But we yeah. were able to do that. And, and it was a great <laughs> experience, you know, from beginning to end. And Sunday was all about reflections. And what did we learn? What did we get versus what we, you know, originally sent them? <laughs> the armpit. Yes. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. I, like I said, I didn't think you could catch that last line. Yeah. But yeah, it was, it was, you know, who gets the dog. So they were originally fighting over the painting that they were pulling away from in the beginning. Yeah. And uh, it wasn't <clears throat> worth killing each other over in the end. But the yeah. dog was. Because yes. cause we know the dog's important. <laughs> Yes. And the uh, the guy who was carrying the dead body out in the beginning, he is actually one of the Macklemore fight um, okay. uh, choreographers. Um, he does fight work for Hollywood. Um, he works out of L.A. He's a really cool guy. Amazingly, like, speedy <clears throat> with what he can do. I mean, we gave him concepts that he just immediately threw out choreography. And him and Doc, who I believe worked on the other one, um, I mean, they're brilliant and, and you can tell they're so comfortable with their weapons Yeah, you know, here in this short, you can see that they, they were trying to be as fast as possible, but they weren't as confident with these weapons. Yes. These guys, oh my God, like the, the speed at which they moved was just amazing. I could watch it all day, even in their classes that they were teaching. It was like, this is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds it. Especially the clashing of knives when they hit each other. It's like, oh. That's so cool. All right. So cool. I've got the second video for you. Now, this one was from our second author. So the one that yeah. came in a day late, but she came in with her concept and we worked with her on developing the characters. And again, it was <clears throat> the script versus what you got in the end was a good yeah. learning experience because it, it definitely changed. Mm -hmm. So let me set this one up. Make sure I click the button. This is audio. <laughs> yes. Being Crane said it would somehow stop but the apocalypse. Okay, well, why do you need my help? Because you can sense the magic and I can't. I need your help finding the magic door. Which must be having dinner with your mom right now. And she's gonna be so pissed when we don't show up. She's gonna be even more pissed when the world blows up. <laughs> Dad, feel the magic energy. The door's gotta be down in the hallways. There's a door.
May we please speak with the remarkable, timeless, limitless knower of everything? You must pass through us to find Turtle Cove. Only by killing us without killing us will you pass through this door to your next test. Did he say that we have children without killing them to be able to pass through that door? That's what I heard. That doesn't make any sense. They're not dying. I think they understand now. I think they know what to do. Yeah, please, by all means, share. Remember Combat Con five years ago? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Who would have thought Luke's special move from Combat Con would have saved the world? They're good. Make the next test hard. Yes, true. All right, so fun note on that one. The uh, cloaked figure at the end was actually the author of the first one. Oh, wow. That was a fun note. <laughs> they um, apparently on Saturday, again, I was playing all day Saturday while they were filming. Um, Joe had to step in as the judge because they couldn't find Corey, who is the, the writer. And when they finally did find her, he'd already done his parts. But ah. the other team needed somebody to be the cloaked figure. So he handed the cloak over and sent her on to the other yeah. one. <laughs> so the second one, the premise was really good. Yes. Um, it, it was more fantasy based with the, you know, the elements of magic in there. And when the author had come in, she had the characters in mind, but there was no why. Yeah. They were just doing things. So I got to spend a lot of time with, with her on characterization, which again, on that Friday, when we got to sit in with Jared, his class really emphasized those points. Mm -hmm. So the characters became a little bit more meaningful. Now she originally wrote them as siblings. Yeah. And this again, due to, you know, constraints on, on the actors available and all that, it became a father daughter instead. Yeah. So they, I they kind of like that. <laughs> yeah. there, there was some flexibility in, in all of the characters that were written so they could, be gender fluid as necessary. They yeah. could be filled by other characters, um, but they all had their their main points of being there. So you had, you know, the, the daughter was the fighter, whereas the father was the, the one who could sense magic. So they had their purposes for being there. So it was fun working on that one and seeing the end result, because once you turn mm -hmm. that script over, it's now on, you know, the directors, yeah. the choreographers and the actors to bring that vision to life in the best yeah. way that they can. Yeah. Yes. And it always looks very different. Yeah, fun, nice tension in some of those spots. They really did some uh, good work on that second one with the uh, the slowdown of the fight in order to create the tense moments. Yes. And uh, the the joke of uh, the special move from Combat Con. Apparently, five years ago, there was somebody who did that special move in a class. And so they 
got a huge laugh when they played this because everybody oh, had been there for for a while knew knew this move knew that person and they were they were cracking up so that was specifically written in to get a, a good laugh from the people who are long-term combat con goers hmm. uh cinematography and again for a a one-day film yes what you could bring with you on vacation kind of a thing they did a really amazing really job. good job yes they did yeah and while that was playing i, I did get another character. one yeah <laughs> Nice. Nice. Yes. Yes. So it was, again, I'm glad we only had two because if we had, had more, it would have been more challenging. It would have because, well, we needed enough filmmakers. Yeah. We need enough teams doing the choreo. So we had the, there's two Macklemore guys that were teaching the Macklemore intensive. Yeah. So if we had any more than two scenes, then we would not have enough choreographers to help do it to help it okay. exactly now the so guy who, out. <clears throat> yeah, the guy who was running the um filmmaker side of the intensive he also is a fight choreographer too so he could have stepped in should there have been a third but beyond that we would have been stretched so we know mm -hmm. for next year one of the things Even we have more. to do is make sure the numbers mm -hmm. are all even when it comes to that side of production yes because if we don't have enough people to actually film it then we don't have the films because they did take all day for a five minute film. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The, yeah. the, Oh yes. Oh yes. Even, even, you know, filmed news spots take, take a, a hell of a long time. <laughs> now, it's, I, it's amazing to get it right the first time. Yeah. And, and I've, we've done page to stage before at combat yeah. con, which is a, a, a smaller version of this instead of filming it they're just doing the choreo yeah and i've seen them be able to throw together the choreo really quickly yeah and not even from a script from you know narrative from you know a scene that you just pulled out of your book mm -hmm. and so i i know they can do it quickly but yeah. to get it right to get the angles to do mm -hmm. the reshoots to get the dialogue in there and that was one of our big concern was the stunt actors have been training all weekend to stunt fight but can they deliver lines? Yeah. So we were, we, we had a lot of things to learn and I think next year it's going to be even better because now we know a little bit of what to expect and what we need in order to make these films happen because those film guys, let me tell you, I was, you know, locked in the classroom Monday or not Monday, Tuesday, Thursday and Friday. They were locked in the classroom all four days. Not only were oh, they wow. doing the, the learning, the pre-shooting, the story blocking, um, the scouting for locations. I mean, they literally took the whole weekend yeah. to create this and spent almost till the deadline on Sunday night to finish editing so that they could present it. I was going to say, did they, did they have the ideas, the pitches before they had to do all that or no? No, that was a learning experience. Oh. We had initially thought that authors would come in and we would help them write their scenes and we had two days to turn the scenes in yeah well sure the scenes needed to be ready to go in two days but getting character bios getting yeah. uh shot lists and scene ideas and rough outlines and all that is really helpful to those filmmakers oh i'm and sure they're it is. oh so yes when, it is <laughs> when you have an author come in a day late and they're just starting their idea it really puts a crutch on things yeah but that's but that's a good experience overall too you know it, it's crisis management like we were talking before the show <laughs> and it was it was hilarious because every one of us we all know our parts and the teams that were running the intensives yeah can't say enough good things about everybody who's running the intensives because even as we were stepping on each other's toes to make sure things were getting done Nobody yeah. was getting mad at each other. Oh, no, you never do. Yeah. We had a, a come to Jesus meeting Friday night where the, the two uh, the two head runners of, of Combat Con were like, all right, everybody get in here. We need to figure out what's going on. Yep. And we're all like, well, I did this and I did that. And I thought you were doing this, but I was doing that. And they're like, oh, so nobody knows what they're doing. Okay, you do this, you do this, you do this. We're like, oh, seriously, peace out. I'm done. Yep, exactly. Oh God, yes. <laughs> we were all just, you know, cool, just taking up the slack where we could. And because we were all doing it, we were all stepping on each other's toes. But again, nobody was getting mad. Right. We were all just trying to make 
make it happen in the best way we could. Yep. And, and that's, that's part of conferences and, and comms and everything is, is to roll with the punches and make sure everybody, well, the, the, the ones who are running it needs to make sure everybody knows what they need to do when. And it's very hard when that's fluid. <laughs> yeah. and, and, you know, it, again, learning experience. Mm -hmm. um, Kevin, who was running the, um, the film side of it. Yeah. I know initially he was stressing out about not having stuff. And I was like, I, we, we can get it to yeah. you and we get it to you, but we don't have this, you know. Right. And, and what we ended sure. up doing was a lot of the filmmakers classes were in the same room as the writers classes. So that as yeah. the ideas were being percolated. Yeah. The, the writer could be with the filmmaker going, okay, here's what I'm thinking. And, and a lot of times they did just sit down and re-edit the script together. Right. Because that's helpful for both parties to, you know, rewrite if it's not working or if, if the writer thinks it's working, but the film person doesn't and, so, and, and needs to the understanding between the two of why it doesn't work. What, what needs to happen to make it work is a great learning experience. Yeah. And, and the film guys each brought their own unique flair to it, as you could tell in the videos mm -hmm. that, that were filmed. And yes, Regine, there were lots of yes. takes, lots and lots and lots of takes. Yeah. But it, I think it, they it, had pickup shots Sunday morning too, okay. um, because there was a few things that they needed to quickly grab in order to get them put in. Mm -hmm. um, but they, their, their approach to how they were filming it yeah. was very different, but they were very open and, and, you know, walking you through the shots as they see them. And one was like, he was very mobile. Like as he was looking for, uh, you know, or as he was visualizing the shot, he would either bend over real low to a table or stand <laughs> up. And he was really, really like animated in his movements. Yes. And, and the other one, he was constantly like running up and down hallways, getting shots before to see what it looks like, going outside, going to different rooms. I mean, it was really cool to watch them work. Yes, it is. It usually is. I mean, I've seen the production of a commercial, you know, uh, many commercials, you know, in my in my former, you know, television life. <laughs> they have everything together. Yeah, exactly. You know, live is live when you're in in television is more stressful than t on tape, unless even with deadlines. Okay. Because on television, on the network stations, you can't flub up. Mm. You can't drop words. Yeah, I don't. Oh yes, oh yes, we've we, we've had some live shots during during election night. <laughs> <laughs> when the when the reporter didn't know she was on, <laughs> and was ranting a little bit about. <laughs> What what the f was going on at the station? <laughs> See, <laughs> yeah, my husband said he's when he sat in the in the back of the newsroom, he said he's never experienced anything so stressful. <laughs> you get in trouble if you let that stuff fly. Well, it it aired. We were live. <laughs> it's not live on tape. Oh yeah, oh yes, and and I know I know a little bit about getting in trouble. FCC you know. fines and all that. Well, yeah, I, I edited uh, Revenge of the Nerds and the owner watched it and I missed an F-bomb. I remember you telling me that story. Yep, yep. <laughs> and we had the list of dirty words that could be said and when and what never could be said. <laughs> oh, that was that was such a fun after college job. <laughs> I don't think it would be. I, I could see that. Yes, yeah. So, I mean, the productions were always tense, even even when we were doing kids news spots and, and those were taped, you know, trying to coach a, a child, a young teenager to do the news, to do a news story that they're compassionate about yep. was interesting. <laughs> I can imagine. So it's, it's the same thing, you know, the, you have coaches helping people write, helping people um do all that do all the you know editing and the visuals and you know the footing where where are you supposed to stand <laughs> did they have tape on the floor 
I don't know because I, I didn't go down there during okay. the filming. I wanted to okay. to stay out of underfoot. Yeah. <laughs> because I, I had already been basically up everyone's butt during the first two days trying to get everything done. Yep. Um, no, but, no tape balls, huh? <laughs> if you know, if Joe were hanging around, I'm sure he'd have something to say because he was down there. He he was participating in, I think he participated in both. I know, obviously, he was in the first one we showed you. Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, he's credited in the second one. So I know he helped out with some of that. But, I mean, he was really, really good to have here yeah. during this this first year. Because, again, I don't speak script. And it was it made it easier to transition from, you know, what the author is trying to write into the simpler. I don't want to say simpler because it's really not simpler, but it's different. Yes. The, the, you know, very different form of writing it in the screenplay format. And it, had I not had Joe there, we would have ended up leaning, I think, more on the filmmakers, which they were already stretched out as much as possible. All right. Who's doing what back there? Oh, Darren's putting it. He was, he, he went like this in front of the camera. He, he got himself some more scotch. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, look at him. He's looking at me with a new drink. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I'm like, I'll be out in 10. Yeah, you can have her in 10 minutes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, so the whole, the, the entire product, television production is always intriguing. Yeah, and, and this was very much eye-opening. Um, yeah. Next year, we're going to have them come in with their ideas already sketched out mm -hmm. so that filming isn't so stressed out. So chaotic. It's always going to be chaotic. And then we'll be doing more after classes, mm -hmm. um, you know, like the reflections, you know, what did you turn yeah. in versus what actually got filmed? Um, and what did you learn? What was the biggest thing you learned here? Yeah. You know? And yep. then we're going to workshop some fight scenes where you actually go, you know, we'll grab the Macklemore guys and we'll go, okay, here's the scene as written. Yeah. Let's see what it looks like visually. And we'll stop and go that. See, that doesn't work. See, that doesn't yeah. work there. This yeah. would work better if you did it this way. And then, mm -hmm. you know, the, the writers will get a chance to edit their work with yeah, that they, visual help. Yeah, the postmortems are very important. But they can be really <laughs> fun, too, because like yeah. I said, uh, I got to sit in on some of those Macklemore classes. And yeah. they're intense, mm -hmm. but the, the fluidity with which the teachers moved, because you could tell how comfortable they were, was amazing. And then watching the students as they started, you know, a little bit flimsy and then got more comfortable with the moves, you know, they're doing the same thing. It's really cool to watch it come together. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, and as a writer, when you visualize it, you can write it even more if yeah. you can actually play with the knives too. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> I am sure. Okay. I know you're 12 and all, but what's so hard about what? I'm not even saying that. <laughs> I'm going to drink this. Yeah, <laughs> we're just gonna... Actually, I almost wore it. Yeah, that would have been funny. It started to slide. I'm like, oh, no, we can't drink it yet. <laughs> and and we did also learn that we need to make sure that we have an even number of authors to filmmakers. Yes. yes. Um, we can always, you know, pull people in as extras when it comes to mm -hmm. actors, because most people that show up to a, a convention like this more than willing to jump in front of the camera yeah, for like, a cameo. Yeah. 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 <laughs> So as long as they're not in fighting roles, I think we would have no problem pulling in extras, but we definitely need to make sure that we have an even number of stories to filmmakers. Yes. Yes. <sighs> but it was fun. It was so much fun. And the, the Macklemore guys even said, next year, do fantasy. We want more fantasy stories. I'm like, yes. Okay. <laughs> we will put that into our, our uh, submission information. That's awesome. <laughs> You know, yeah, we're all big nerds. Oh yeah, yeah, we oh, like yeah. weapons, but we're all big nerds. Yep, I, I, you know, as I said before, I'm on vacation, but I've got to get a little bit more writing done. I didn't hit my goal of getting close to ninety percent done before this vacation. I'm at like sixty percent of the of the novel. I've got half of the. Mike, you know, the 3,500 word story for, um, for the Christmas anthology that I'm doing. But that's 3,500 um, words. That's easy. I know, but it's, it's the prequel to, to Silent Night. Mm. Yes. 
Okay. So, so that's going to, I'm having, I'm like, okay, I don't know what I'm going to write next on the, on the main thing. So today I did, I did that. And that's got to be done by August 14th. Oh, so yeah, it's, it, yeah, that. that, that one's got the short story needs to be, you know, submitted by then. And then I've got tainted mind, which that's the, the, the big one that I'm like, okay, I sort of know I had a dream about the ending. Okay. <laughs> yes. So I know the ending. <laughs> I love that. And I'm like, oh, can I pull that off? <laughs> like, it's a dream, you know, so, so it was bizarre. Uh, <laughs> but then, you know, I sort of know where I'm going with that. I just have to get there. It's the, it's the yep. scene yep. jumping now. Um, I just have to have time to do it. And I'm not going to have that much time with with people here. So mm-hmm. that's how but, it was for me on that Friday night. Why? Yeah. I was happy to get a little bit done during yeah. quiet writing time, but yes, till two or three in the morning because if I didn't get my work done, I couldn't play on Saturday. Right. And I wanted to play. Damn it! That was my only mm-hmm. day to like just say screw it. Yeah. I'm playing today. This is my time. Yep. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. And and and. And I want to read this. This is the Arcane oh. Society's Suzanne Wright book. Oh my God! Look at the the oh, stuff. So that's so this so is pretty. Yeah, I've got a. There's a second one here too. But I'm like, I've never read Suzanne Wright, so it's like, okay, that's going to be my thing. <laughs> but that's the Arcane Society box set. So they send boxes out every other month. Of special of special editions like this, um, and now there's a waiting list. So, I want to know where they get those printed at. I it's overseas. It's definitely overseas, but I don't know where, because she was tracking the ships. Oh shit! And it was it was th- I mean, yeah. This was this is supposed to be the um April book. The February and April April books wow. came in at the beginning of July. Wow. Yeah. She she's never had it had, but they, they were having paper shortages. Right. So hardcovers are really tough to get the paper and, and 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 it's beautiful with the you know stencils on on it and the you know gold inlays and things like that. Um, so she gets them done overseas, but I just don't know where. I'm like, I want to know where because I want to do special editions and buy shit too. <laughs> or have me as one of your authors. Speaking of special editions. <laughs> yes. What? Oh, this yeah. One's, this one's coming out real soon. Yes. Yes. That's awesome. She, still, she made me put my picture on the cover. <laughs> I know you were saying that you were whining about that, but I think it looks good. <laughs> Stop whining about it. I never put my picture on the cover. I know, neither do I. <laughs> For obvious reasons. <laughs> I mean, no, it's it's it was very nice that she wanted me to, yes. to be active on the cover there with her. But honestly, I you know, I'm not you did the all the research. qualified person. I, I yes, I did research, but she you went to did. school for this shit. I know, <laughs> but you did the re- you did a ton of research to help her with that. So you know, it's very very gracious of her. Yes. To and, to, and I appreciate the gesture. I do. I do. Even yes. if, if I'm ditching, I'm complaining about my picture being on the cover. It was. It's so, a very. So nice our next picture. set, when I say we have to put our pictures on the back, are you going to go like this to me? <laughs> Damn it, Jane. <laughs> Sorry. Probably. Probably. It's because I never do it. I never put my picture on the cover. I think I did it one time and I was like, yeah, this feels too no, flashy. Yeah, no. <laughs> I don't know if I want my picture on it. It's too flashy for me. It's like, yeah, no. <laughs> I just want the pretty cover. Nobody cares about the author anyways. They care about the content. Yes. Yes. And that book has Prove great content. Prove no, that book has great content too for PTSD. Well, so. yeah, that, that book, I, I really do hope that book is able to help people. Yeah. Um, it, it's, it was a lot of research. It was hard mm-hmm. to write in some of those yeah. spots. 
I'm there sure. are some very personal stories that are included in there to go along with the traumas that we talk about. Um, oh yeah. It's, it's a deep, hard hitting book with purpose. And I hope that helps people. I hope so too. Wait, I like to <laughs> <laughs> I well, I I don't have a filter normally, but when I'm drinking, there is none. Zip. <laughs> yeah, no, they want pretty covers. Yeah, they like pretty covers. <laughs> Good. <laughs> uh, anyway, well, I need to buy like twelve or so when I get them too, so I can I can take them because I'm doing uh what is it Las Vegas Comic Con in September. Ooh. Although I don't know that that's going to sell really well at Comic-Con, but to put in with all of my other books. Yes. Yes. You never know. That's cool. That's cool. Vampires, Anyhow. werewolves, PTSD. <laughs> that could cause PTSD. <laughs> cause effect. There you go. Oh, good Lord. Good Lord. <laughs> On that note. <laughs> yes, on that note. I need to get out to the fire before I get too sauced. <laughs> yes, go go have one for me. Go enjoy yes. the uh the fire pit and all that good stuff. Yep. And Thank you guys for off. hanging out. Next week we're off. Yeah, next week we're off. Yes. Vacation. Yep. So we'll see you in two weeks. Unless Katie does one <laughs> pop on for the hell of yeah, it. Exactly. <laughs> you never know. It depends on how I'm feeling that day. It's possible. Yeah. <laughs> All righty. All right, guys. We will see you in two weeks. Thanks for hanging out with us.